I'm David Berlin with ZDN. I'm coming to you from Interop in New York City. We're at the Javits Center in the west side of Manhattan. And, you know, a few years ago, if you had a lot of noise in the air from your wireless networks and your wireless network was not working, it was really hard to figure out why that might be. Well, now the products that analyze the air that's around you and look for signals from things like microwaves or other types of devices that could be interfering with your Wi-Fi networks are much more mature. And joining me here is Dan Critch of Fluke Networks to tell me a little bit about this device here. It's called Etherscope, and uh, it does some cool things. So why don't you, I'll hand it to you and you kind of walk us through what it does. Sure, well what it can do is it looks at the Wi-Fi spectrum. It looks at A, B, and G and uh, it tells us what's out there. Right now, we have in this location that we're at, actually it says 101 access points in B and G and A, 353. And I can dive into these channels here and get more information about the signal strength on channels one through 11, and we see we have some issues, uh, too much going on here causing some conflicts. Uh, we can actually go and look at noise, and we'll get uh, you know, all these red lines indicate noise. And where does noise come from? Noise comes from microwave ovens, Bluetooth devices, and cordless phones. And this application that's actually running in the background here uh, shows us that we do have microwave ovens running, that we do have cordless phone and Bluetooth activity. And when you have this activity, it slows down your performance of your network and actually can kick you off. So uh, this, these devices here are very good for troubleshooting and uh, actually locating and finding them. They'll walk you right to these devices. And what better place to test a device of this nature than an interop where you've got all these vendors who've got wireless phones or uh, wireless Bluetooth stuff, wireless uh, Wi-Fi networks and stuff going on. Yes. So this is really showing that the air is flooded with a lot of noise. Yes. Okay, so what else? Uh, can you see how much, like what's better, your, your signal for your networks or your noise? Yes, we can do that right now, signal versus noise. Oh, okay. And uh, what we have here, the blue line is the signal, the red line is the noise. In a lot of instances, the noise is too strong. So uh, what do you do when that happens? Well, in a lot of cases, you have to uh, try a different channel, go to the higher spectrum, the eight channels. But if you can't do that, you got to get rid of the noise, get rid of the Bluetooth devices, get rid of the microwave oven. You have to actually throw that microwave oven away. I'm looking at the device here, and it's connected to a network. But then I see what looks like a Wi-Fi adapter blinking away. Does this matter? Uh, well, this device can do wired and wireless network analyzation. All right, so I could, by a touch of a button, I could turn this side on, I could plug into a fiber port or a copper, and I could do the same thing. I'd look at the network, I could look at the ports on your switch, see where there's too much activity, and go into those ports and see who's taking up all the bandwidth. So this isn't just your basic Wi-Fi analyzer or wireless air analyzer because you're, you're looking for other things like microwaves and stuff like that, but it also will analyze your plain old wired, hardwired ethernet. Yeah, or something like that. that's okay. correct. Very cool. Now, uh, how much does a device like this cost? It, list price is like ten grand. Ten thousand thousand dollars. You can get it without the Wi-Fi card, and your list price is around six thousand dollars. All right. Well, Dan Critch, good luck at the show. Thanks. According to Critch, in terms of the networking connectivity here, the hardwire port supports both ten, one hundred, and gigabit Ethernet. And this wireless adapter is not any old wireless adapter, it's a proprietary one. The most important thing is that it supports A, B, and G Wi-Fi, but as soon as N is ratified, the AO211N standard is ratified, there will be an upgrade path for that as well. Could involve a software upgrade, could involve a new card, but either way, they promise that you can upgrade this unit to support AO211N. For ZDNet at Interop in New York City, I'm David Berlin.